hey guys welcome back so these are eight whole reasons why people fail in business even before they start why did i say before they start because the business is from day one build to fail and these are some of the things that we don't pay attention to especially if you live in africa you know where our economy is you know comatose it's not structured you will fall into some of these things without paying attention without knowing why and you know how we we are quick to just you know keep patching it keep doing it or closing up and starting somebody something else and then concluding that our climate or our business climate is the reason why we are failing but now let's critically look at these eight things and see also how we can do better when it comes to business because at the end of the day if the gross domestic products and our the costing of our country's GDP and our economy, you know, in relationship to how it affects the home, the individual, and the larger society. It depends on what small business owners or even big business owners have to do and how they are doing it. Now, let's look at these reasons and why it's important for you to know these things. Plug them early because small businesses are really the base of every strong economy. Are you ready? Let me share with you from my personal experience. Keep watching if this is the kind of video you want to see. Tap the like button if you already love this topic and then keep watching. All right, so I sat down and I did like a brainstorm. There's something that I have discovered, right? It has happened to me a lot of times. It's like a circle. I think because, you know, you, I mean, you have to survive, right? You have to make money. And for me, I'm usually an ideal person, usually because, I say usually because everybody's personality plays out in their business. And that's very key, right? So I have seen this as a trend, as a pattern in my, in my businesses. I started business, my own business when I was 29 years old. So I, that's why I think I'm a late bloomer, you know. But then from then till now, which is about 13 years, I have had quite a whole lot of experience with both online businesses and offline businesses and even businesses you can do from home. And these are the eight things that stood out for me when I was thinking, come on, why do people fail in business? And because and if you know me, I am very pro-Africa. And for God's sake, you need a higher level of resilience, knowledge, street smartness to be able to make your business work so let's jump into these eight reasons right number one what is what i call the copy copy syndrome yes you heard me you heard me yeah so that's a syndrome where <laughs> you know we just see somebody doing something selling something and assume that oh my god this must be it he's making a lot of money he's succeeded without approaching this person this business owner to say oh how are you doing this business you know how do you how do you source your raw materials how do you deliver how, how, how much are you selling what is your profit margin you know why did you choose this business and how tough it is, is it or easy is it we just conclude by the things we see we might just see that oh this person runs this business and he has an suv you know he his children are in a good school we Without figuring out that it's possible he has another stream of income that is financing that lifestyle. So we just jump into it. Oh, if he's doing sachet water business, it must be working for him to have XYZ. That's so funny, but that's so true. Please don't do it. Okay? Don't let the copy copy syndrome infect you. The cure is usually very unavailable, in fact. The cure for it, of course, is like watching this video. So it's not always as it appears okay i am telling you from experience but you know you see it everywhere people want to do what you're doing you know you teach people in an online course and off they go to teach your models you know to do what you do then you're wondering why am i not getting students to patronize me you know i have had seminars webinars in the last few years where immediately i, I teach people what i know what works for me and how i made a success they go off and create their models with the same thing i have done right and then they start struggling and wondering oh how come she's getting people paying her xyz to learn this and how come i'm not you know getting you know the same results and they forget that it's not about information for instance nobody's going to pay you for information it's for results and that's just an example so don't be the copy copy person wow number two is that people don't research the industry the sector the products or the service that they want to sell 
they don't research it appropriately by finding out the feasibility in a particular region where they want to start it. Even if it's an online leader that had a global appeal, you know, you need to make sure that you have researched, know the kind of people who need that service, find out what their buying power is, is like, right? Find out their mindset about it. Now, especially if you're an African again, if you want to do an online business, maybe online coaching or online course, right? Do we need it? Absolutely. Is everybody, almost looks like everybody's doing it, right? Now, Africans who also can afford certain amounts of money to buy a transformation app online course, for instance, may not be able to pay. They might prefer to pay somebody else who maybe is not African for reasons that, you know, you and I know if you're an African and will not pay you. Meanwhile, somebody who lives, you know, in another continent, maybe in Asia, in the West, might actually be the one to buy your course. But the thing is, you might not be able to tell. You might not be able to discover that on time and be able to pitch to the people who are in the West because, you know, black has an appeal. And then you keep struggling and wondering, oh, why is this thing not working, right? Please research every sector, every product that you want to get into. Don't assume. If you need to go and work for somebody who already is doing the business, you know, being frank that you want to learn the ropes. There's a system of business that is very typical in my tribe, you know, the Igbo tribe of Nigeria, where people apprentice under somebody for seven whole years, then they set them up to start their own businesses in another place, you know, equip them and all of that. That system is like business mentorship and it really works. So you can adopt it. Yours might not be seven years, but go and establish somebody who has succeeded doing that same business. It might not be in your region anywhere, and then come out with street smart experiences. On how to tackle this I know why I'm using the word street see you can sit down in a business school and I'm not discounting business schools and their models but you can sit down in a business school learn all it is about pressure marketing and all of those things you know I have a degree in business as well and then or a certification rather in business as well and then you come back and discover that these things are not working in this region ah these people are not loyal these my clients are tough because you need to adapt it to where you live to where your business is going to be right so very very important if you don't research it that business is going to kick you out real quick and you're going to wonder what have i done wrong and your all your investment might just go down the drill if you're not you know careful so when I say research, go out there, roll up your sleeves, don't assume anything, don't take um, advice from people who haven't done this business and hit the ground running very fast that way. Okay, the number three reason why people fail at business, especially in Africa, before they even start, is that first of all, they don't have patience and they're not ready to delay gratification. So they're starting this business and they're already thinking in their mind by the next six months, I'll show my my neighborhood that, you know, I'm the boss, I'm the CEO of XYZ, you know, they're already prepping. They don't know the, the business profit margin yet. They don't even know what they're going to see, you know, with distribution and all of those things with paying staff, but they're already planning as a person, as a business owner, planning how they're going to rip off the business. It won't work so if your idea of setting up a business is to be able to show off to acquire everything you need then you are going to be shocked and surprised you're going to meet a root shock really so if you you need to have a measure of patience a measure of oh my god this business has to live and be sustained and allow the business grow don't be using the money from the business for your personal earnings for your personal um, expenditure things like that are the are the reasons why people quit even you know as soon as they start yeah what reason I have found out that affects people who want to start business who are ambitious about starting a good business is that they do not price their product or their service appropriately this one breaks my heart because I see it all the time I see it on the street I see it everywhere especially in Africa now if you live in africa you understand we don't really have a pay structure for a lot of things right so it's not like in the west where if you want to pick up a cleaner job or you want to start up a cleaning business there are statutory things you have to do to benchmark against how much you pay 
an individual, all of those things. Yes, we have things like minimum wage and all that, but how many people can start a small business and afford to pay minimum wage to people, to prospective employees in that sense? So you see a lot of people go out there and decide that maybe they want to start cooking rice. And then a cup of rice is about 200 naira Nigerian money or about 25 cents, you know. And then they they begin to, um, they maybe let's say they cook about 20, maybe 20 cups, which is about $5, right? Now, they then they make stew, then they buy meat. Meat is very expensive, right? So like a kg of meat, maybe beef, which is about $2.05. 2,000 naira in the list and then you see them serve now let's say they do you know they buy about two or three kg to be able to serve that 20 cups of rice then they cook they use gas they move around the food they in their in their coolers they move around the food maybe to workplaces market areas and then they sell they also buy take away disposable plates to use and serve the food and then make stew so they buy tomatoes uh, all of that so right, all the condiments spices and all that so they make this food the cost of, of production for this food may actually be let's say a plate of food if you if you put a scoop of rice which is like maybe half of one cup of rice they might you know and then put stew and meat that Food may be costed about 400 naira when you dish it realistically, when you look at the portioning and all that. But they would sell it at a cost far lower because when they say, oh, my scoop of rice is 400 naira and people would need to buy at least four scoops to be able to be really full. So they think about it and say, okay, if I say four scoops, let's say for every scoop is 100 naira or 200 naira, four scoops will be about 800 naira in Nigerian naira, plus the meat and all that, it will get about a thousand, you know, and a thousand naira is about one dollar, you know, and it's just a little on top because uh, calculating with naira is really exhausting, guys. But uh, I love Nigeria though, but so, and then you see them deciding that okay, one thousand naira is too much. For people in this particular area to be able to afford so they don't end up costing and looking at the profit of their business based on their cost price they sell according to what the people say they can afford so you see them sell below their cost price then every day they are struggling to go back they get money from other sources and just keep doing the business keep you know with the stress they move around they carry it around they are under the sun. Most times they wear, you know, um, raffia hats. They take themselves a bit from the hatch sun. And they go all out. They can walk the streets for four or five hours. They come back and they repeat the process. I'm painting this scenario because it's true to life. It's true to the life in Africa. It bothers me because at the end of the day, business is supposed to be for profit. And then you approach them and you come to say, oh, how much do you make from this? And how much are you selling? They say, oh, forget about what I'm buying it. They won't be able to pay. So that's what I'm selling. So somebody will be asking, so in that sense, what should they have done? Cook your food, realistic pricing, and please serve the people who realistically understand the value and are willing to pay. At the end of the day, it's about understanding that business is for profit let me go to the next point the next major mistakes i see business owners make all the time before they start is that they don't set up a business structure so this is how this business will run this is my place this is who i need this is how we do what we do and this is how we're going to generate money to pay for staff so people start businesses and they don't think of what if they are not there, right? So it's not sustainable from day one. So they plug themselves in there and they are working the hell out of their lives. And there's only a limit to what one person can do, right? And most times there are no delegations anywhere. Understandably, they will say, okay, you need money to be able to dedicate, which I understand, right? But then, these are things you need to plan before you start. I've made these mistakes myself in a couple of businesses, and I can tell you for free that it is not the best way to run businesses that can outlive us 
well somebody will say maybe they don't want to run business blah, blah, blah. leave them so what's the essence business is supposed to be an investment right it's supposed to be an investment that will give back to society and be there sustainably so how not having a structure is such a big deal Another aspect which I'm going to look at on that structure is that people don't document their business processes. So this is number six. People don't document their business processes. So that means this is exactly how we do what we do. So let's say the, the food business as well. What is your recipe? What are the ingredients you use? Why do you use them? In what quantity do you use them for? this quantity of water for instance how long does it stay on fire before you add the condiments the that the that the that are all of that not important they are they are supposed to be documented so that if you're the one cooking and you um, it's easy for you to transit or give the place off to somebody else to continue with the days you cannot or you want to you know when you want to grow the business but when there are no laid down rules you know that's what i call it recipe Recipe is not a list of ingredients used to cook the food. <clears throat> it is step by step how much it takes, how long it takes, what you, when you put what you need to put, what quantity measurements and all that that goes into making a particular dish. That's the only reason why your the meals will come out tasting a signature way. Not that today the same rice and stew is tasting differently when somebody comes into your restaurant tomorrow it's tasting it in another way and it's being cooked by the same person right that's the cause of that so documenting your business process is very important documenting how you do what you do what happens first in that business what happens second what happens third and how is it done so that if they have a new employee all they need is to go through what was written down and they can say okay so this is what i should do for this so when you employ somebody for a role the process for that role to produce whatever it is that is their duty will be outlined so they follow suits they know this is the first thing i should do this is the second thing the third so that i can give me xyz re result the result it gives you is the brand of your business it, it fosters sustainability and and um consistency I really wish you understand what I'm saying and I know that you are, right? So it is the bane of businesses around us not being able to structure their business and not being able to put a process to their business operations, okay? The seventh reason that I see that businesses fail on arrival is that many business owners don't take the time and to understand what profit even means, guys. I live in Africa and I've lived here for 42 years. It breaks my heart to see that I have a mentor. God rest his soul, Obon King. I'm going to tag him below. His channel is also here. He was the first person, the first African who taught me profit that I understood. That also made sense. Profit in a way that you will not shortchange yourself. You can't do business with your blood flowing in your veins business is an investment you're doing it for the betterment of humanity right it shouldn't take you it shouldn't deteriorate your health your business shouldn't be the reason you you will not live a full life right a lot of businesses here don't know how to calculate profits on their business at all so in nigeria right now i keep using here as an example a bag of rice a bag of nigerian rice very very nutritious the only problem is that a lot of it are bagged without, you know, careful sorting and the chaffing. But I love it all the same. I buy it sometimes, you know, and I do all the, the chaffing myself, the destoning and all that. But that particular rice right now, as of the last time I bought it, which about two weeks ago, is 24,000 naira from wholesalers. Now, I thought, okay, I now understood. I said, okay, how do people who sell it, you know in retail how do they make money how do they calculate how much they buy it now the price of things have been up going up and up in a free will in nigeria you know for the longest time so you know we are surviving anyway but i discovered that okay since i bought 24,000, all i needed was to divide it by the number of cups that makes the bag it's about 150 cups i divided it by 150 and it gave me about it gave me that a cup should be about 160 naira 
Then I said, oh, that's the reason why they sell it 180 Naira in, in the retail shop. Some sell 170, some sell 180. Meanwhile, that rice used to be 110, 120 just a few weeks back as well. I said, okay, so what they do is, so they buy this bag of rice, they know the number of cups it will come out, so they add like 20 Naira. And they say, okay, so 20 Naira on each cup sold. So it comes to 160 and they add 20 Naira and make it 180. Is that profit? Is that profit? Like, nobody considers the way billing. You know, the person who went to offload this rice, the person who went to carry it, the transportation they used to carry it. Nobody considers the storage. You brought this like rice, you want to sell it, you put it in your shop. That shop, you're paying rent for it every year. You're not considering all of that in selling that rice. And then they just put 20, 20 naira and they keep selling it and it keeps going on and on and by the time they are done selling that bag of rice the bag of rice uh, would have increased to maybe 26,000 or 26,500 they, they are done retailing this in about maybe a week or less and then discover that they can't even have they don't have enough capital to go back to restock on that same rice and that's the reality in Africa and then I wonder we need new ways of doing business if we're going to do businesses that will impact lives and will give us the lease of life right so don't fall into that trap don't for even fall into the trap but that's what people put it will be so expensive it will be this business is first for profit my final point on of course not the least and it's the bombshell the eight points why people fail in business before they even start is that they don't have a long-term plan <sighs> So I see a lot of people start businesses and then they're already calculating what they want to, how they want it to be in six months, in three months, and then they are marking time. They are just, they are feeding up the business, they are taking money from the business, and there is no futuristic plan of how do we expand this business? How do we go from selling just retail, you know, rice to where we are importing it in bags of 100, 200? They don't know how do we enlarge this shop and become the go-to people when it comes to grains or this rice no long-term plan to a lot of people and it's crazy i know that having a long-term plan means like having a plan of how your business should grow consistently in, in a say five years ten years but that doesn't mean you just sit back and be waiting for the five years to come it means that you also have short-term goals that you want to meet to make sure that your long-term goals are going to also materialize and that brings me to another key point a lot of people who don't do this don't know that psychologically that's poverty and the group of people who take time to look at their short-term goals towards the long-term plan are usually people who are rich in their mind. So they look at their short-term goal. If it's not meeting the metrics over a period of time, then they know that the long-term goal may not work out. So they strategize on what next to do. If you understand what I mean, business is warfare like I heard. People have been saying it, I did not understand it till I understood it. <laughs> okay, so if any of these eight things I have said, you know, really, really, really made sense to you, please give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section what other aspect of business you want me to share or you want me to expand on. Okay, until I come your way again, go sit down, think business, think operations, think profits, and then let's continue the conversation in my next video. Okay, bye.